I was worried about High on Life. The latest title from Squatch Games and their first to be on Xbox day one, it was set to launch on Game Pass in just three days. This review's embargo was in two, yet still there were no review codes available. At 11.13 p.m. on Friday, December 9th, the email finally arrived. I took a Steam PC code and our editor-in-chief, Sick Mechanico, took an Xbox One. My download finished and I loaded it up. Within 10 minutes, all of my worries were gone. I was met with a gorgeous, hilarious first-person shooter that is also an absolute joy to play. I'll break down the majority of the game and go over PC performance, while Sick will break down his time on an Xbox Series X. So let's get into it in the Xbox Era Review of High on Life. After a hilarious opening sequence in which Earth is invaded by an alien drug running gang who want to inhale human life essence, you and your sister will come into possession of Kenny. He is a Gatlian, a sentient talking gun who will warp your house away to the city of Blim. To try and stop the cartel and save Earth, you'll become a bounty hunter, killing your way through the cosmos, freeing more Gatlians, and making new friends along the way. Blim is a stunningly realized hub world, full of places to explore such as the Pawn Shop, a totally legit and not at all illegal food stand, and various other points of interest that you gain access to slowly. One word of warning though, this is an adult game, not just in words used but in topics discussed. Outside of uh, See You Next Tuesday, I'm pretty sure I heard every swear word in existence in this one, along with a lot of hilarious sex and body humor. After a bit of guidance from Kenny, your sentient pistol, you'll meet up a washed up old bounty hunter who is living on a park bench. In exchange for your house if you die, and he fully expects you to immediately, he lets you wear his old gear while he hangs out on that couch, which is also his toilet. Most of the game's missions will have you visiting worlds in search of bounty targets, with some variety mixed in the middle and later parts that helped a lot with the pacing. Those bounty targets are progressively higher members of the gang that has taken over Earth as their newest base of species-based drug operation. The G3 Most of the bounty targets have either a new Gatlian or some form of suit upgrade, with one of the very early missions getting you knifey. He is a maniacal talking knife slash whip that is desperate to slice through the guts of everyone you meet. Each weapon you earn has a unique personality. Kenny is voiced by Justin Roiland with his very familiar delivery. JB Smoove kills it as Gus, a shotgun style Gatlian. The overall voice cast is seriously impressive and they do a great job across the board. It definitely feels like a lot of improvisation was used here, much like Swanch's other games and the cartoons that Mr. Roiland and company have worked on in the past. There is a lot of Rick and Morty style humor here and that will either hit for you or it will not. You can lower the amount of both your guns and the enemies talk during gameplay, but I loved it and kept the meters all the way up. The story is mostly ridiculous, constantly funny, and occasionally tugs at your heartstrings. Your sister Lizzie is a big part of things, and her growth throughout felt genuine and well-earned. The player never speaks, but you do get to choose responses for your Gatlians who take over the duty of conversing. Performance on PC was excellent. I have a 5800X and RX 6700 XT. Running at 1440p and mostly max settings, I averaged well over 150 frames per second in my roughly 10 hours of playtime. I did have two crashes where the something went wrong Unreal Engine 4 error window popped up, but I was pushing things a lot as I captured footage through OBS at max quality for this video review. High on Life looks fantastic. From what I remember, there has been a level of sheen and just overall quality added to the texture work since its debut trailer at the Xbox Showcase. The terrain and ground can look pretty basic, and the geometry overall is nothing special, but the characters, effects, skyboxes, and the overall art style are flippin' gorgeous. I played the Steam version of the game, and the load times were short on my SSD, being rarely longer than 5-10 to 10 seconds. All the great looks and humor in the world can't save a game if it isn't any fun to play. Thankfully, High on Life controls really well, has a lot of variety in its combat, and a satisfying traversal system. Every Gatlian has a main attack along with a left trigger or right mouse modifier and a special move that operates on a short cooldown. Kenny is a pistol that can shoot from the hip or aim down sights. His special move is a glob shot where he shoots out a glob of goo from his special hole. 
This bounces enemies up in the air and lets you juggle them with further attacks for extra damage. Gus is a spread shotgun blast from the hip, and the left trigger slash right mouse for him has him suck in enemies like a vacuum. All four main guns have this function and allows for a great amount of variety in their combat encounters, and knifey is key as your melee ability as well as being a major part of traversal. Certain enemies will either be invulnerable or take low damage until you stab them with a press of the right stick or F on your keyboard. And he is also a whip that can be used to help you Tarzan your way through most environments. One of the biggest parts of the games is finding space pesos and buying upgrades and mods for your suit and weaponry. Pesos are earned either whenever you kill enemies in small amounts, complete bounties which net you large sums, and there are living chests that Knifey can stab open that give between 2 and 400 per murder. Finding and being able to access all of these chests is tied to unlocking suit and weapon abilities and is one of the key incentives to exploration and returning to previous environments. There is a counter at the top right of the screen for each area that lets you know how many chests you have, and the combat radar in the bottom left doubles up as a chest locator. There are multiple traversal systems, and without spoiling them all, let's just say that you'll be moving around like a coked up doom guy in no time. This is a very high paced first person shooter, and at times it actually could feel a bit overwhelming. With just over two days to play, write, narrate, and edit the video for this review, I was really unable to explore and upgrade as much as I would have otherwise. The later combat encounters in the game can get really tough, and if you haven't upgraded your suits and weapons, you will struggle even on normal difficulty. Thankfully, the movement always feels fantastic, and the few times I did aimlessly wander around, I felt well rewarded for the time spent. The Pawn Shop, where you can buy a lot of your upgrades and mods, is owned by a character voiced by Rich Fulcher, a star of classics like The Mighty Boosh, Snuffbox, and other insane British comedies. He was the token out-of-place American and he was hilarious in this game every time I heard him. There are some crazy, ridiculous things in High on Life that I cannot wait to see other people experience. So I've given a breakdown of most of the game's systems, while trying to keep things as spoiler-free as possible. So let's bring in John Clark, our editor-in-chief, for his take on the title. When High on Life was first revealed during the Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase earlier this year, it was a genuine surprise in an industry normally full of things that just leak. But what's this? A comedy FPS from the minds behind Rick and Morty with talking guns and wacky characters? Sign me up. And as a big fan of Rick and Morty, you have to have a very high IQ to understand it, obviously, I was really looking forward to playing it, and like Jesse, was a little worried that the code for review came in so late. It's not normally a good sign, and all the time I'd set aside during the week to do the review entirely myself was, alas, lost. Thankfully, with Jesse powering through on PC, I got to spend around eight hours or so with the Xbox Series version, and my friends, it's one of the most surprising and consistently funny games I've played in ages. And not only is it funny and surprisingly pretty at times, it also feels incredibly good to play. The combat loop between your guns and their various abilities feels mostly great. Things get a little chaotic at times, but it's part of the charm. And performance is pretty solid on the whole on Xbox Series X at what felt like a smooth 60 FPS. Now, I'm no pixel counter, but thanks to a bold and bright art style, the game looked great on my 4K 86 inch TV. I did see some frame drops and performance issues on occasion in some of the more open world type areas and I experienced some very minor bugs. During a boss fight the boss was stuck behind a door forcing me to restart the sequence and one time my faithful gun Kenny just disappeared out of my hand but otherwise no big issues. There are however absolutely bucket loads of little touches that I really appreciate. The whole improvised comedy of it all, the breaking of the fourth wall with nods to pop culture, specifically around video games. It has one of the best beginnings to a game ever, I think, and detective mode is the best version of that feature in any game ever too. Other more technical things like the way NPC characters will call you out if you start speaking to them and then walk away, and if you return they'll tell you off before continuing from where they were abandoned during the conversation without skipping a beat. If you, like me, enjoy the comedy that you get in shows like Rick and Morty, you're going to adore High on Life. If you're offended by frequent sexual references, 
sounding rods, alien cum, and hearing shit or fuck every other word, you'll likely find the humour crass and offensive. And that's okay. But what you have under an incredibly imaginative and well-made FPS is a lot of heart, great humour, and a surprisingly engaging story. I haven't laughed or chuckled as much as this since Portal 2. You should absolutely play this. It's a great end to the year for Xbox users. Careful, boy!